Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale with a returning guest, but it's been like forever. It seems like a year since you've been on the channel. Clyde, Clyde, welcome back to the channel, man. Thanks for having me, Ash. It's good to be back. Uh, it's been a while and a lot yes. of things have changed, but I'm glad to be here. I know. I was looking back at our last video and it was like, it really was almost a year ago. So, wow, the game has changed a lot. And I've always looked up to you as being one of the best free-to-play players, or certainly a free-to-play player who really made a name and a reputation for yourself, uh, you know, competing really well at live events or uh, in just online events as well. So I thought I'd bring you on today and kind of just pick your brain. It's been a really popular request by you guys that I have somebody on, a free-to-play player who's legit and knows what they're doing. So if you're cool with it, I'll go ahead and just get into the questions, man. Of course, shoot. Well, actually, you know, before we do that, anything, what's going on with you? I, kind of a crappy intro there. Is <laughs> anything, you know, what have you been up to in the game? And, uh, you know, what, what deck have you been playing lately in the game? Uh, lately, I've been pretty active in the community, so I still do my tier list on Reddit. I've actually just joined an esports team, Team Phoenix, and nice. and uh, I'm looking to still continue playing at a high level. Right now, the decks I'm currently playing are in challenges, just about anything, because I usually have everything tournament cap. And on ladder, I usually try to play non-legendaries, but the legendary that I do have is Lava Hound, because I love Lava Hound, and, but the other cards beside it aren't any legendaries. Uh, that was kind of, I kind of stumbled a bit. Yeah, no, no, but it, it's funny because, you know, you mentioned Lava Hound, right? And before Lava Hound meta was even a thing, you were like the pioneer of Lava Hound decks and Lumberjack decks. I, I, for some <laughs> reason, I remember that. Those two things, when I think Clyde, I think Lumberjack and Lava Hound for whatever reason. Uh, you know, how do you feel about the the, uh, the evolution of Lava Loon and Lava Hound? And are, are you a fan that it's become, like it's went from being like an underrated and kind of interesting meta to kind of one of the most hated now? Uh, understandably so. I myself never liked Lava Hound and Balloon. I liked Lava Hound and Miner myself, but okay. it's so strong that I can't ignore it. And I don't hate it as much as other people do, but I would like to see it kind of have more counters so that it's more playable against. Yeah, that, that kind of makes sense there. Uh, and, and, you know, like, obviously free-to-play players have legendary cards too. It's just a matter of not having them all. So it's difficult when they see a deck maybe on YouTube or they see a pro streaming a deck or in a tournament, whatever. It's difficult to find those substitutions. So I guess that's probably a good place to start as any, right, is when where do you, as a free-to-play player, where do you look to for your decks? And is it just a matter of always having to, sub, to substitute that Musketeer for that E-Wiz? Or is, are you looking specifically for decks that already have Musketeer so you don't have to substitute? Uh, that's a very good comparison. What I tend to do is I try to look for the win conditions that are low rarity. So I try not to look at the high rarity win conditions like Lava Hound and Miner, which are legendaries, which are hard mm -hmm. to level. I try to look for the ones that are like rares or common, saying like Giant or Hog or even Mortar or Expo. And then that's exactly what I try to do. Uh, if there's a legendary card that has a comparison with a lower rarity card like E-Wiz and Musketeer or Princess and Dark Goblin, I try to substitute those. And even though they're not exact carbon copies, they tend to do the job just almost as good. Okay, so you're looking for a win condition that you have, whether it be a legendary or not, but hopefully not a legendary, but you're yes. looking for a, you know, like a hog rider or whatever, you know, a rare win condition, yeah. uh, and you're just building a deck off of that. Exactly. Subbing because where the, you need to. Exactly, because the win condition is what's going to win you games, and uh, supporting cards are almost just as important, but they're not as important as your win condition. What if you have like a you happen to have like an ice wizard but not an electro wiz? Would you rather sub in your level one or two e, uh, uh, ice wizard, or would you rather just play your you know uh, your archer say or your musketeer that is pretty much at par with the rest of your card levels? I tend to try to play with the archer. If I had a choice between some like a level thirteen archer or level two e wiz, I would choose level thirteen archers because the the stats are a little bit overwhelming. Level 2 E-Wiz will still die to like a one level higher fireball or like a level 8 fireball and all that kind of stuff. I believe it's a level 9 fireball. But yeah, I try yeah. to play if it's something over leveled. I would play that over the under level legendary. Okay, it sounds like you're definitely keeping in mind uh, spell interactions on your cards, you know. Uh, when you level up a card, if it can die to fireball or die to zap, you definitely don't want to play it in your arena level. Yeah, that's a big deal with playing under level cards on ladder. 
Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so let's take a step back here, and let's start out by, as a free-to-play player, you know, uh, you've been playing the game, what, since beta? For a while, right? Yeah, ever since the day it came out. <laughs> yeah, so you've been playing <laughs> for a while now, so even though you're free-to-play, it's been like, you know, you, you've had the chance to accumulate, like you said, all your, all your cards are tournament-level standards, and you do have, you know, a few legendaries or whatever. So... What do you think about if you were just starting out now or maybe like six months ago, you weren't as far as far along as you are right now. What would your strategy be just as a free to play player, like to make you feel like you're actually making progress in the game and not just treading water on ladder or getting frustrated? Like, what do you think are some good, maybe short or long term goals as a free to play player to make you feel a little bit more accomplished in this game? Sure. Well, I actually started a new account, and it's also free to play. And okay. my first goal with that was to obtain all the cards to look or to tournament cap. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing that now. I have like a couple cards tournament cap. I'm like hanging around three thousand because my cards are still like level six to seven. But that's my first goal for that account, and that's the goal I set when I created my Clyde account uh, last year. Uh, secondary goal would be to upgrade one specific deck higher, and more specifically, one specific card higher that I intend to play for a long time. So back then, that was Giant. I was a big Giant player back then. I always requested for Giants, and I tried to level up as much as possible. And even though I wanted to play something else, like say I wanted to play in Mortar or Expo, I would have to fight the urge to upgrade that because I know that I might get bored of it someday. But So to choose one card that you really like and that you can see yourself playing multiple decks with and just upgrade that card. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So you would just start with the win condition in your deck and just try to get that card up, whether it's a rare or a common? Exactly. Okay, and then you would just do, after you level up your giant, let's say you have an over-leveled giant now because it's all you've been requesting for <laughs> months and months. Mm -hmm. uh, so where would you go after that? Would you start leveling up your supporting cards or would you move on to another win condition? I would say spells would be the second important thing after win condition because it, most spells are variable. Like even though... Poison was better than Fireball, you could still play Fireball and it, you wouldn't hurt that much. So I would say spells are the second most important thing after your win condition. Okay, that makes sense a lot. So your win condition and then your spells are the most important things to request for and to try to level up. Now what about the gems? You don't get many gems as a free-to-play player, but you do get some. Is your best bet for gems to hold on to them until something uh, really good appears in your shop? Or would you just spend them on classic challenges? What's your favorite like gem strategy? Or maybe if, you know, grandma gets you a $10 gift card <laughs> for Christmas. Like, what, uh, what's your best bang for your buck in terms of how to spend the gems that you do get? Uh, well, back in the old day, the best way to spend your gems was to gem your chest so your cycles faster. Or if you had tournament chests, is, is to gem that. Nowadays, the best... Thing by far is challenges even if it's in the shop to say a new card came out and they had that special for 200 rares of the new card i would resist urge to buy that because it's better to grind challenges with those gems because 200 gems is 20 challenges which can get you up to like 400,000 gold and it's just yeah. better in the long term Okay, so you would just go, now what about like grand challenges versus classic challenges? I think your better bet is probably just playing, grinding out classic challenges if you're not spending a lot of money. Do you agree with that? It depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for more card per time, like of your time, or if you're looking to have fun and kind of you know, ration out your gems and play longer, because if you have 100 gems, you probably have more fun playing 10 classic challenges than one grand challenge if you're like really short on gems so it depends on what you're looking for if you have you know a good amount of gem like 400 gems and you consistently get 12 wins then grand challenges are a good way to practice as well yeah for sure yeah i guess it just depends on the tier of your spending because obviously like you uh, with the added be added benefit of playing 10 or 20 grand or classic challenges to one or two grand challenges you also get that experience using a deck you know which is valuable as well exactly uh, so what do you think about playing somebody on ladder when – or it's incredibly frustrating. I know this is like one of the most <laughs> common questions that I get is how do you deal as an underleveled player? Hopefully you can level up one of your decks like you talked about. But still, yeah. eventually you're going to reach that point where you're just going up. Let's say you're a level 9 and you're just going up against level 10s and 11s every single match it seems like because you've hit that higher range of your – of your comfortable trophy area. So do you have any strategy advice when you're constantly, or whenever, even if it's not constant, when you do match up against somebody who's higher level than you, 
Is there any advice that you can give to people in terms of should their play style change at all? Or should they just keep playing the deck it's meant to be? Should they be more passive? Should they be more aggressive? What do you think about playing someone who's higher level than you? I would say that if you're playing somebody higher level than you, then it's better to be more passive because you need the extra damage of your towers. If you're playing against somebody and they have like a level third or level nine giant and you only have level seven, then your giant's, his giant's gonna be a better push unless you have the tower to help you. So like it's kind of like the six man uh, in Clash Royale is your tower. Yeah. So try to play more defensively and over time, even the over level person might even get frustrated that they're not getting past like somebody two levels lower than them and they might be more aggressive and then you'll come out with a elixir advantage out of nowhere. So if you're under level, being, pa being aggressive is kind of a downfall and you should be more passive. I like that. Try to kind of frustrate your opponent by just playing good <laughs> defense. And then it's true, though, you know, because, like, think about it from the other end of the equation, because I'm level 13. If I go against a level 12 who's just stopping everything I do, I, you're, you're totally right. I do tend to get more aggressive, be like, come on, man, I should, I should win this anyway, <laughs> and I just get a little bit more aggressive. And, it, and sometimes it does come back to haunt me. So that's actually good advice. So play solid defense and kind of look for your opportunity as you kind of uh, gain that elixir advantage. Exactly. Now, you know, a follow-up question to that would be, since you're trying to focus more on defense and being a little bit more passive as an under-level player, or if you're in the higher trophy range than where you ought to be or most people your level are, what do you think about maybe subbing in more defensive cards in your deck or playing a more defensive deck on ladder? So maybe if you have, um, uh, I don't know, cannon in your deck, do you think maybe just subbing in Inferno Tower and going a more control archetype would be a smart move? Or maybe subbing in, you know, Barbarians or something to help shut down Royal Giant. Uh, do you think this would be smart substitutions just in an average deck i know it's hard to talk about in generalities but do you think playing more defensive cards is a better thing for a lower level player um i wouldn't say playing more defensive cards is better it we i think it would be right to say have a more defensive mindset because even when you play cards like infernal tower barbarians you're just evening out and you're never gonna have an advantage because those cards are like five elixir a common strategy i like to do is to play defensive cards but have Elixir Collector. Elixir Collector is like a low key win condition. You can mm -hmm. be an opponent just by having 10 or five more Elixir than them. So Elixir Collector goes a while while well saying about playing defensively, you can just play defensively and play more Elixir Collectors. And over time, you'll have like a 15 Elixir push against like a five Elixir defense. And it won't matter that their cards are higher leveled. That's a really, really smart idea too. Like, so would you fit the Elixir Collector as a free-to-play player into a deck that otherwise normally wouldn't call for it, just trying to gain that edge? Yes, I was actually a pretty prominent uh, Elixir Collector player because I was so used to playing it on ladder. And even if your Elixir Collector is underleveled, it doesn't hurt too bad. Like, if there is a big level discrepancy, like, yeah, they'll get more Elixir off of it. But it helps, you know, me affirm my philosophy of playing defensively and building Elixir advantages. And then that's how I beat the overleveled cards. That's really smart. Uh, so what are you playing right now? What's your favorite archetypes? I know this might be a tricky question because obviously you don't have an account in every arena, but mm -hmm. just a general sense, like, do you feel that some decks work better in certain arenas depending on what the meta is? And if so, what are maybe a couple examples of that? Yeah, so it's actually pretty funny because I actually have a lower level account and a mid level account and like a high level account. So I can, I can actually see all the metas at all the levels. Yeah. So on my lower level account, I try to stay away from giant because most people are playing like witch and barbarians and really the over level commons like elite barbarians and all those. So it's really hard to play giant and uh, at those levels, it's easier to play things like goblin barrel or things with very medium risk, medium reward. In the mid levels is what is closest to a tournament cap where you can play almost anything and you're not punished too heavily except if you see like a level 13 royal giant out of nowhere. So like the mid levels like 3000s to mid 4000s 4, are pretty good compared to tournament standards. And then on the higher end is where people tend to play more risky things like it's less defense. People are just going 3-1 or 3-2 towers and then you just basically see who can take towers faster. Okay, that's a, that's that's cool. That's it's a good it's a good kind of snapshot of the of the meta through the arenas. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, wrapping up here because I think you've provided incredibly valuable information here for people out there, especially to give a little bit renewed spirit, not only in the <laughs> game plan of what they're what they're going to be trying to do to progress in this game, but also you know how to deal with different types of situations. So thank you again for coming on. Do you feel that like sometimes you're underestimated? Uh, be being like one of the only 
only free to play legit players in some of these tournaments. I know some of the live ones like King's Cup that, you know, you were like one of the only guys there that was free to play out of all the final eight or whatever, you know, do you feel like you're that can you can play that to your advantage sometimes? Um, I, I felt like it was to my advantage when I played my first tournament, which was a Super Mario Cup. Nobody knew me because I was never on ladder. And the only time they ever heard me was in Super Mario Cup, where even then my cards were under level. I had like level two epics. <laughs> um now after now everybody that, knows you <laughs> yeah before then nobody knew because nobody i didn't play on ladder and all the people who were good were the people who are high on ladder yeah. now after people have seen me play and there have been more live events where cards are tournament kept um you can't really underestimate some people because some people right now are really prominent tournament players who still aren't high on ladder and people are starting to realize that just based on how often you see somebody in grand challenges or everything so grand challenges have been really great for free to play players yeah, that's that's definitely true. Well, Clyde, thanks again for coming on, man. Should we? Uh, is there any place we can reach out to you? I know you're on Twitter. Anywhere else? Any thoughts of maybe streaming or creating any content at all in the future? Uh, yes, thank you for bringing that up. So you can follow me on Twitter at Clyde C. Royale. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually starting to stream. So my streams on Twitch and Mob Crush are both Clyde CR. And look forward to seeing my stream schedule in the next week or so. And I'm really excited to be part of this community. Ah, oh, dude, I'm excited. I, honestly, I didn't even know that. That wasn't a setup question. I wasn't sure. You know, I knew you had talked about maybe streaming, but uh -huh. it's really cool to hear that you're going to go through it. I can't wait for your streams, man. Yeah, uh, thanks, man. <laughs> as you guys can tell, he's definitely like, you're a really skilled player, but you're also really articulate and you're just fun to listen to. So can't wait to to catch you to catch you on, on one of those streams. And uh, I'll make sure I include all that information in the description below for you guys. Clyde, thanks again, man. Appreciate it. Uh, no problem. Thanks, Ash. And thanks for having me here. Ah, no problem at all. I can't wait to have you back on again. May hopefully, it won't be another eight or nine months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I did. Make sure you check out my YouTube partner, Bren Chong. His information is in the description below. You can check out his social media, his Twitter, his Instagram for giveaways daily and tournaments. So, guys, thanks so much for watching. Sp special thanks to my guest, Clyde. And as always, take care, guys.